Oh, hi. This week, we're going to look back on the year past as it is the end of 2022 somehow, and just look at the projects we've gotten through this year because I am very bad at giving myself credit for stuff. And this was a really great exercise for my confidence, like self-esteem about my making just as a person. Looking back at all the stuff I made and how much progress has been made, I found it very helpful and like reassuring. And I would encourage you to also look back, at like, you know, if you post stuff on Instagram or just take photos of any of your stuff, it's like, look back at the stuff that you've made and feel free to comment about it. If you post it somewhere, tag me, post it in the Discord and we can hype each other up. I want to end this year on a good note. I have learned I have a very hard brain time during this part of the year. This is definitely a way to kind of keep my head afloat as far as the work that I do in here. I am filming this a couple days before Christmas, so I'm hoping to take that week between Christmas and New Year's off. Like, a video will still be up, obviously, if you're seeing this, I put the video out, but I don't think I'm gonna be doing any work next week other than I'm gonna be working the tap room. Anyways, let's begin The Unfortunates. This, this is not unfortunate. That is just a quote from a show I watched, I rewatched for like the third time recently called Wayne. Has anybody else seen Wayne? It's gory, but I cannot recommend it enough if you don't mind any of that. I identify with that show a lot. Weirdly made me love my partner even harder because it feels like a very us type of relationship somehow. This is going off the rails already. Let's look back at the beginning of 2022. And obviously I'm looking at my phone to see what the videos are because I do not have a catalog in my brain of what I put out. So if I'm looking down, I apologize. I don't want it to feel like we're hanging out together and I'm just scrolling through Instagram while you're like telling me about your life updates. Okay, first off, apparently I have posted 544 videos in the course of me having this channel and that is bonkers. And there are 6.7 thousand of you, which is a lot. Listen, I know it's not a huge channel, but all of you are wonderful. Every person I've interacted with that hangs out here, one of my fellow bog trolls, I really enjoy your company. Whatever has brought you to this corner of the internet, we are kindred spirits. So thank you for being the best community in the world and some of the most talented and creative people I've ever met. And okay, we're gonna start after project recap video from last year. Also, it was the end of a second no-buy year. I forgot about that. I did buy some fabric this year. Most of it was thrifted. Apparently, I started off strong and I made a button front A-line skirt. I have not made much in the way of button plackets in my own sewing. I did it a lot at the costume shop. I made literally hundreds of like white button up shirts. The thing that intimidated me was just the math involved with adding the button placket, but it's it's not that hard. And looking at this, it's making me want to make another button up something. I love the look of like a button up, is that a sundress? Thin strapped, but button up front. I just really love the look of it. And I've never made an actual dress that buttons all the way up the front. So I think that would be fun to mess around with. I have that princess seam, like my dream dress pattern. I think that would be a good starting point to mess around with the kind of dress I'm picturing. I will absolutely be doing more sketches. I'm planning to make another zine. So like beginning of January, that will be the Patreon gift. I'm just very excited that I figured out how to make zines and I can put stuff like that out into the world. The next project we did was a pleated skirt. Of course I made it harder on myself than I needed to because I could have either just pressed the pleats at the very top and it would have flared out towards the bottom or I should have hemmed it before I pressed all the pleats in place because once I did that very tedious kind of pressing and got everything nice and even, when I hemmed it, it messed up the entire bottom and kind of undid the pleating. So then I had to repleat the whole thing. So had I taken either different tactic, that whole thing would have been a lot easier, but it was good practice in both the technique and with my own patience, which is not always my strong suit. Then I tried making my first denim garment, which was an A-line skirt with a button up front. I think that turned out a lot better because I got the practice on the previous button placket and I learned you really got to reinforce the front. And also having the buttonholes going up and down along the placket rather than across. I don't know why I thought going across was easier, but it's much cleaner. There's gonna be less puckering issues and stuff if you have the buttonholes going up and down. Then I printed my first bits of fabric. I made that little Burt pouch. I still have that stamp. I wanna print some more Burt things. It's wild thinking I did that project so long ago, earlier this year, and the only time I printed fabric since then, I actually printed some jackalope bags. Like I printed fabric with my jackalope lino block and made bags with it. This is what they ended up looking like. 
I have not listed them anywhere yet because I was selling them at in-person events first. If you want one of them, message me because it's going to take a while for me to get everything up on my Etsy shop that I have available because I don't have any events for all of January, which is good. I need to rest. Everyone needs to rest. On to the next. I made an A-line circle skirt. It hadn't occurred to me that that was an option. <laughs> and I do remember actually letting that skirt hang so that the hem was falling nice and even. I, I often, when I'm making a circle skirt, do not let it sit overnight because if you don't know, when you cut a circle skirt, parts of it are on like straight of grain, but parts of it are cut on the bias and that has more stretch, like more give to it. So especially if you're doing like a full circle skirt, there's a lot of fabric, there's like any weight to the garments. Sometimes the hem is gonna get stretched out in certain places. So it's helpful to like put it on a dress form or hang it somewhere overnight, 24 hours, however long you wanna leave it, a couple days if you have other things to do. That way, if anything goes a little uneven, then you can go and properly hem everything and it will have like done whatever it's gonna do by that point. This was the first time I ever actually like let it rest before hemming it. And it was really cool cutting the hem straight in the way I did. Like I cut it while it was on the dress form. I've never done that before. So it is a circle skirt, but rather than having that big curved bottom, this one went straight across and that's what made the A-line shape. And I just really love how it came out. I wear it all the time. The only downside is it doesn't have pockets because it was cut without any side seams. Okay, then I made my first wristlet. I forgot that's when this started. The video is called Perfecting My Zipper Tabs because that was something I really, really wanted to like get down for this year. I've made a lot of zipper pouches in my time now, but there was something about the top edge of where the zippers went in, where the zipper tabs were. I hated how it was looking. And then finally I figured out how to go about it. So that was very satisfying and very helpful. And I've used that technique probably a hundred times since. I've made a lot of wristlets. Granted, the wrist strap part of it is a real pain in the dick and I don't enjoy doing that part, but God, they look so nice. The video after that is me bitching about Etsy, which we don't have to go down that rabbit hole right now. You all know. Yes, I did try to set up my own website and I got too overwhelmed to do it. One day I'm gonna get it figured out. I would say for this upcoming year, but it is stressing me out even thinking about dealing with setting up my own website. On to the next. That's right, the pyramid bag, the pyramid zipper bag. Those are so fun to make. Broke my brain in that like magic trick kind of way. Get a tube, fold one end this way, fold the other the other way. And I actually wanna make one that has a handle on it. Again, I hate making like the strap apart, but it's fine. What I should actually do is just invest in a bunch of different colors and widths of strapping material so that I don't have to make wrist straps like that anymore. Something to focus on for the new year. I don't actually have any specific goals set. Maybe we can do that at the end. Oh man, I was on a real bag kick, huh? Because next was the keychain bag, like for dog bags, specifically with the buttonhole in the side so that I can put like the roll of dog bags for Bert in there and kind of just pull them out without having to zip and unzip the thing every time I need to take one. I always forgot to bring a bag with me if I was taking Bert out. If I just have the bags, in a little pouch on his leash all the time, then I don't forget things as often. Let's see, oh, and then with the mini backpack I made for my dear Samowich, me being a meathead, didn't think about the fact that yes, the bag can be mini, but the person wearing it is not then miniaturized. So the straps still need to be like normal human arm length. That is definitely a project I wanna redo. I also wanna learn how to do the pockets that stick out more because the one I put on the front of this mini backpack is like flush against it. And I know the other way is more challenging, but are we not here to learn things? Also, most if not all of the bag patterns in particular and some of the skirt patterns, the little like schematics and measurements and layout and number of pieces that I've cut out and any of the findings and hardware you need, I have those up for free on my Patreon. No, no pressure to go over there, but you don't even need to donate to get access to those. They're up for free. You just look up pattern on the Patreon in the tags and it should bring up a whole list of different things. So. I want you to be able to make stuff regardless if you fund the projects or not. We're here to share the knowledge and not gatekeep shit. All right, then I don't remember why I did this. I still I still use this to this day. Every time I play D&D, campaign's still going strong. We're a year in. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm getting more comfortable and like more confident in my role. I'm playing a dragonborn rogue. I will eventually make her outfit. Actually, that is a goal for 2023. I do need to find a place to order like studs from because my character has like a studded leather piece of armor. I want it all to be black and I've only ever seen like silver studs on things and spikes. So I, I, I need to do some research. If you have any recommendations for places to go, let me know. Cause I've never, in all my years of all of my, my punkhood, I have never 
purchase studs. So I mentioned this because I made a little dice tray. Basically, I cleaned up a box that I found at the thrift store and I put some felt in the bottom and I use it to roll my dice. And actually, I just keep all of my like D&D &D accoutrement in there. This is it right here. I have notes to remind me because I have very bad working memory. I do remember specifically having a very basic project like that. That was right before I went in for my tonsillectomy. I cannot believe that that was this past year. Felt like it was an eternity. That recovery, oof, at least it's done. But oh man, that was a wild time. So I think I had to take a couple weeks off after that because I couldn't even talk. Even getting the liquid pain meds down so that I could drink some water. I would literally be in a heap crying on the floor because the pain was so bad I couldn't even stand up because I was like seeing stars. I have no words. All that being said, the relief that I have had, I, I would do it again. I just... I was not prepared for what I was gonna have to go through. And honestly, maybe that's for the best. Anyway, during that time, I did figure out a really good way to do my own fashion sketches because a thing I've been talking about a lot recently is trusting my instinct and like my eye, like my stylistic inclinations, where it's never been something that I've given myself any credit for. And I've always felt like I don't have a good sense of style or anything like that. I voiced this to my therapist one day and she looked at me like I had four heads because I had been seeing her in person for over a year and absolutely flabbergasted that I thought about myself that way. She's like, okay, we, we need to dig into this. I see you come in, you put these outfits together, you make your own clothes. I am surprised to hear you say that. It's just that I, I basically didn't feel like I was worthy of having an opinion out in the world. It felt too vulnerable and like my opinion was always going to be the wrong one as far as like something being very subjective like that. You know what? No one's going to dress me better than I will. I'm going to pick stuff that I like and I like it for a reason and maybe I need other people's help to find like better silhouettes or whatever. But the actual general look of things, what I want, it's what appeals to my eyeballs. That's the stuff I'm going to be most excited about and want to wear. So making my own like croquis was a really good step in that direction where I was able to like get the ideas down a little more solidly. So that was a really cool video to do. And then actually, I don't know that I have updated this too much recently. Oh, I mean, I did make these pages because I've been doing the fashion sketches and then trying to do these fun little layouts. Oh yeah, the moon and star dress. Okay. I kind of want to go back and make sketches for some of the things. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I am ashamed. Anyway, I was able to take the time to kind of draw and mess around with stuff and figure out the croquis thing and take the time to sketch all of that stuff out and play around with my drawing program and everything. Because that same month was my birthday. My partner got me a new computer that is a touch screen as well and has a stylus and I have had a drawing program for forever that I never used because I didn't feel confident enough to mess around with stuff like that. Because my recovery from my tonsillectomy was so brutal and I couldn't do anything else but just sit and like watch stuff and couldn't even talk. So I just sat and like figured out these programs. That was a really good thing to come out of it. And then similarly very time consuming, very tedious project but so cool is that Okay, the day before I got my tonsils out, I participated in a thing called the Pink Boots Society, which is supporting women in brewing. I work at a brewery. So all of the female employees got together and we got to help make a beer. It is a hibiscus pale ale called a pale tint of red. And we got to design the label and it it was really cool. The whole process of it. Like I, I am a beer nerd. Like I want to learn as much as I can about it. And it's a lot of fun seeing the process. And I know most of it is cleaning and we did we did get to experience that as well. Putting the stuff together and the steps of the process. I've homebrewed, but I've never done anything on this like commercial scale before. So it was, it was so cool. I really hope we get to do that again this coming year. But yeah, we brewed the beer the night before my surgery. That beer was doing its thing and got released about a month after that. And I was basically in the midst of recovery that entire time. You know, the beer label got made. We had some like emails back and forth to decide on the final design for it. I really liked how it came out. So much so that I got the idea to make a little like corset top kind of thing that matched it. And I only had the time to do this because I hand drew everything going on here and very tediously put all of the things into the Cricut design space and just basically printed and shaded my own fabric. It was just so many hours into this, but I was able to do it because I had that, that time. And then, yeah. I got to go to the release event for the beer and had the top that I made that matched the label and it was just really exciting. I enjoyed it a lot. Very proud of that whole thing. Then 
Oh, I made swatch cards and like a fabric stash organization system. I have kept up with it pretty well. There are a couple things I have not cataloged. Ooh, actually no, I think everything in here has been cataloged. The only type of fabric I have not done that for is all the flannel I have. That also only gets used in very specific situations and there's just so much of it because I was gifted a bunch by my lovely fairy god Cheryl. That kind of has its own place, like maybe one day I'll catalog it, but I'll give myself a pass if all of the other fabric is sorted into like type. And oh, actually what I've been doing is when I have used up all of the scraps of a certain fabric that I had cataloged, I take the card out. So I have a couple here. There are actually a couple more I need to take out. And then things like this, this is stuff I'm gonna send as little Patreon goodies because I, I don't know. I try to think about the Patreon mail time perks and the custom shit perks as like, if I were to receive something from someone I follow that does the stuff that I do, what would I think would be really neat? And I think having swatches of the fabric used in certain projects would be really neat. I, I definitely have some other ones I need to, I need to remove from the folder, but that was helpful. And also just anytime I reorganize in here, it like revitalizes me. And also I got my hands on all my fabric and was remade aware of everything that I had. I'm very out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So it's it's good to have those kind of tactile, thorough rummages. It kind of re-sparks old ideas or it comes up with new ones. Next was an impulse pattern purchase. I did two of those this past year. And this first one was from a brand called Petite Stitchery. And this dress is just so gorgeous. I have not made another one yet because there are two tweaks I want to make to the pattern. I get really overwhelmed thinking about it. It's not going to be a difficult tweak. I need to just do it. I'm going to write this on my for 2023 list because it's a very flattering dress. It's a little more open here than I am usually used to, especially in the summertime. I wear a spaghetti strap tank top, so it's not like there's more out on display. It's just a more flattering cut and such a comfortable dress. So I, I definitely need to make more of those. Then it was the lengthening the wrap front Joni dress from the Tilly and the Buttons book. Last week's video, this is the kind of prequel to that where I lengthened the bodice. And then the one I did last week was like the, the goal dress that I made. Then that's right. I started on a shorts journey. I still have not honed in the perfect shorts pattern. Also adding that to my list. I feel like it's just a matter of combining some elements from the shorts patterns that I tried. First was the denim shorts and I actually really like the general look of them. Just the pant legs were so wide, but the waistband, mwah. And that it had pockets, like inserting those pockets was really cool. I didn't know how that worked. The way I lined up the seams on the back is so satisfying to look at. I still have them. I, I haven't worn them because I don't like how they fit, but I, I really enjoy seeing that seam. <laughs> then, I mean, jumping ahead, I also tackled two more pants patterns, or shorts patterns, sorry. And all three of these were from mood.com, like mood fabrics, like from Project Runway, like thank you mood. They have a ton of free patterns, like not sponsored at all, but it's a really, really great resource if you wanna try stuff out. I learned a lot from those patterns, even though I didn't love how any of them, they aim them came out. So I would recommend if you want to try stuff out. Between the shorts videos, I did a adjustable t-shirt. That was really fun. That's very comfortable. I like that one. It's like very snug and form-fitting. So I only like wearing it if I have either a high-waisted skirt or really high-waisted shorts that I can kind of tuck the shirt into. But I really like how that came out. That was pretty fun to work on. And I just really like that shirt. Then the following week, I did the other impulse purchase pattern, which was a French pattern. There was a whole device with that once again forever and always making things more difficult on myself than they need to be but I'll tell you absolutely love how that pattern fit I like it a lot I did end up lengthening the bodice and redoing that dress so yeah about a month after that I did another version with that Jack and Sally fabric I just showed you I wear that all the time also the pocket insertion I did on this exceptional very proud of that all right then jumping back a little bit, basically it hemmed some overalls and, try, and tried to style it. This is another thing, right, that I'm trying to get my head around and give myself some grace with is like putting the outfits together because I know what I like and I've always thought my opinion is not as good or valid or whatever as other people's opinions. It's because it's not and my brain is lying to me. But that's what it's like having depression. Okay. Then I did a actual shop update for once where I do still have a couple of these wristlets available. I really like the whole range, like the whole batch of them. It's very satisfying to look at the collection, I suppose is the word for it. And I'm just proud of that design. That bag and most of the bags I have made with, I 
think one exception. I think the dumpling pouches were made off of a free pattern I found online. I definitely linked it in that video. But the rest of these, like, I just kind of came up with them and found something that I liked and that's how those became a reality. There are free resources available to you. I'll have a bunch of them linked below. One of those happens to be my Patreon page because I don't know where else to put, I can't put photos in the comments or description here. So perhaps in the Discord, would that be helpful if I have like a separate channel on our Discord that's just like, the patterns and then if other people have ones that they want to post they can do that let me know i'm more than happy to share them there and then that's right i did purchase some stuff like backdrop which has been so helpful i haven't used it much as far as photos but i, I want to work on that more i want to like style the things i'm making more and actually use the backdrops just give the garments the respect they deserve or whatever i'm making i feel like i don't put as much effort into the finished result documentation even though like that's the thing that pulls people in or gets you to look at it. Yes, the process is cool, but you want to see what it ends up looking like. And I don't do it enough service a lot of the time. Between that and then a handful of tools and stuff that I got, that was a nice, you know, business expense splurge I got to do. And a lot of that stuff has come in very handy and made my life easier. Then I did a very simple project, which was sewing a patch onto a hat. I didn't know that that was an option before I started the uniform store job that I also have because four to five jobs is not enough. I have that other one. But yeah, it never would have occurred to me that you could machine sew a patch onto a hat and it's just a very good patch. It gets worse before it gets worse. Such a specific sense of humor and, and I vibe with it. Okay, then one of my proudest projects, maybe my proudest project of the entire year. I printed my own fabric. I printed velvet because I found this perfect like duvet cover. I made another lino block with that bird. I think it's like a partridge or something where again, I thought that the bird was a bird of paradise and didn't realize that that's the name of a flower. But anyway, our flag means death. I have intense brain rot because that show is so good and I have thought about it for so much of this year. And yeah, I decided to make my own fabric to make the depression robe and it was really cool figuring that out and like finally testing out the fabric ink that I'd use because it is a different animal than the paper printing ink because that is water-based versus the fabric ink, which is oil-based. It's just a different process. And then the video after that was me actually constructing the robe, which was also just very satisfying to put together. And now I just want to rewatch Our Flag Means Death again. It's called Brain Rot for a reason, y'all. Then it was the Ramona Flowers subspace cardigan. I love it so much. One of my favorite like show pieces to have on display on my table setups when I've done events. I have not worn it to be completely transparent. I used Polar Tech fleece for that. I, do, I run very hot. I run extraordinarily warm. Come to find out my brain wiring leads to bad body temperature regulation, which like how and why? So it's, it's just too warm for me, but I, I love how it came out. Again, the design of it. I really like color blocking, obviously, and I'm letting myself lean into it instead of being annoyed that, oh, I've done another color blocking project. Oh, I'm wearing another striped shirt. Yeah, I like color blocking and I like striped stuff. That's okay. <laughs> so the cardigans that I have made that are this style, I just, I use a lighter weight material because otherwise it's just not going to get worn. It is for sale, but I just really like displaying that it's, it's a very fun, like eye catching thing, which jumps into a month of con crunch art fair stuff. Someone commented that they were very annoyed and they hate that it's not a sewing channel anymore. Even though I did more sewing in that month of those videos going out than I had in the past two years. It's another aspect of my life and that was my entire every waking minute for weeks there. Thank you all for sitting through it. And I know some of y'all also run small businesses or just find that back end of stuff really interesting. Like a kind of behind the scenes of how all that works and setting up at an event and the, the stresses and the pros and cons and all that stuff, the effort that goes into a table display, things like that. And honestly, just having a documentation of the emotional journey that I went on, there was even more roller coaster ups and downs since that part of the year. I have also only just learned that I have seasonal depression where that tracks and I do have videos from every week of the past like decade documenting where I'm at. So it is easy to like look back and find patterns of things. So I'm thankful for that. I hadn't done in-person events like art fairs and stuff in a couple years because of the Panda Express. It was just a lot to wrap my head around and I'm glad to be back doing it. There are, you know, some factors that stress me out for obvious reasons, but I have a lot more confidence in the things that I'm making and I feel really good about it. And as long as I am not in a deep dark hole the day of an event, which 
happened at one in the more recent weeks. I don't get so overwhelmed and freaked out, almost upset and embarrassed when people are checking out the stuff that I have. I get excited with them when they see a thing and they really like it and they kind of light up and are like, oh, I really like the design of this bag, especially if it's a reference to something specific. I had the velvet Our Flag Means Death dice bags that I made. The couple of people that knew what that was were so excited. I even like added some free stickers that I designed into their bag when they purchased it. And, and even if they looked at it and didn't buy it, I still gave them free stickers because they were just excited about a thing I also love. And that so comes across and like that makes my whole day getting to talk about some of my favorite stuff. So getting that facet of my life back, reveling in those interactions has helped a lot. Made me remember why I loved doing in-person events anyway, because I'll shoot you straight. I don't often make much of anything off of those. I had a couple of like very, very successful events, meaning I made more than just like breaking even. And likewise, another bag that I made that did sell at a recent event was the Howl's Moving Castle. It's my first time quilting a bag. I was so excited making that checkerboard fabric panel. Like I, I do want to make more stuff like that so badly. Also more quilted panels in the new year. But yeah, the, the actual creating my own fabric to then make bags out of instead of just, you know, there's the design element of mixing the color blocking fabrics together and like what color zipper am I going to add to it? There is a design eye to that, but actually like creating my own fabric itself. Not that I'm weaving the fibers together, but like printing it or quilting pieces together to make my own custom panel. That feels very cool. And I want to keep moving in that direction. I would love to have most of my stuff be my own printed fabric in some form or another. I have a very fun idea. I need to take some time to work on. It's a very specific way to go about printing some fabric. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to fuck around with. Stay tuned if you want to see the chaos that's going to ensue. <sighs> Next was, oh, the garment I've probably worn the most since I've made it is the lighter weight color block cardigan with the skull fabric. I do still have a little bit left. I have been asked by a couple people if I can make one for them, but no one's actually like committed to it. There is still some left and uh, I'm tempted to just make myself something else with it because it's it's very nice. I don't know what that other garment would be because like that's what I envisioned the fabric becoming. So I'll have to keep thinking on that, but it also doesn't have to get used right this minute. Then the annual last minute Halloween costume idea. It is so silly and so stupid and so much fun. It brings me joy every year. I already have a list started for next year because there's stuff that I thought of or someone mentioned something in a comment like they thought I was going a direction with something that I didn't but their idea is even better than what I came up with next year it's gonna happen that's always the most fun part because I make some buck wild references in those videos sometimes where it's just hyper obscure shit and it makes me so happy when any of you are like oh, wait I remember watching Reboot. You know, I've never done a Eureka's Castle thing, but when people see this and get all excited, it's the nerding out about stuff together that I love so much. So let's let's never stop doing that, please. All oh, right, and then speaking of Halloween costumes, I did make my color block dress Winter Soldier outfit. I have taken the star patch off since, and it just exists as a black turtleneck dress with one gray sleeve. I wanna do more stuff like that. Color blocking, but asymmetrical because all of my stuff has been symmetrical. <laughs> then, oh yeah, I made a Halloween-y dress after Halloween because Halloween year round, baby. And I had a back and forth with how I felt on that dress. I have not worn it since I put it together. I do have some of that fabric left and I do want to mess around with it and like maybe even just make a skirt, like elastic waisted skirt with that fabric. I would definitely wear that a bunch. I did really enjoy figuring out how to put that together. I know once I'm in the midst of noodling around with patterns and hacking them and like tweaking them here and there. I'm in it, but it feels so daunting before I start it. But I feel that way with everything where, okay, I did the roll top backpack. It was great. Bert immediately stole it. He's been loving it. I think I want to make one that's a little bit bigger. I still have a ton of that fabric left because it's the slightest bit too narrow for him to like get really, really comfortable in there. So he kind of stays towards like the mouth of the bag where I want him to be able to go all the way in. So I think I'm going to make one more version of it as far as putting stuff off for forever because I was too daunted by the idea of working on it. Let's talk about the Rob Zarr shirts. <laughs> that was so cool to have worked on. I'm glad so many of you also thought it was really cool. Shockingly, a lot of people were like, oh, is Threadbanger still posting stuff? Kind of went back and checked out their channel where I had assumed there wouldn't be a soul that watched videos here that wasn't keeping up with them. They're just a really big DIY channel. They're why I got into sewing in the first place. It was a partially incorrect assumption of mine. So I'm glad I did get to introduce them to a couple folks and that it kind of rekindled some of y'all's love for them. And if you didn't know what had happened to Rob, 
that he died and then came back to life. Now you know. And even just for the fact of making pacemaker friendly shirts, focusing that little bit more on accessibility type things, that also felt really nice to be able to learn about because I had no idea and just be able to share the project. And it was very cool working with Rob. He's super nice, at least as far as like speaking on the phone is exactly as I would have expected. Now that I've gotten to know him a little bit more over over the years, it makes sense why he also likes watching this channel because we just have a very similar like sense of humor and approach to the world and uh, I, I, I appreciate the shit out of both him and Corinne just for the stuff that they've put out into the world for everyone else to see. I would not be where I'm at in life without their content. So very thankful for that. And also just the opportunity to do this job for him. And that, you know, is his suggestion to do a video in the first place. So also getting to share it with y'all. I'm glad you thought it was neat. Okay, I haven't put it out yet as of filming this, but it will be out once you're seeing this. But the velvet dress, I wore it last night to the work party. It was so comfortable. It was so comfortable. I made a joke about not letting other people touch it. Almost everybody that was there commented on the dress. I told them that I made it. And then they looked at it and I was like, do you want it? touch the fabric. And I actually was excited to say, oh, I made it. Like even if someone didn't ask if I made it and they just complimented the dress, I was very happy to state and take ownership of the fact, chose this fabric, sewed the things together. The fashion sense and the skill that went into it was in here. That felt very cool. There's definitely a part of me that fears I am sounding arrogant about like having any self-esteem about the stuff that I make or do. Listen, if I get too big headed about stuff, don't be afraid to bring me back to reality because this whole having an iota of self-esteem is, is making me feel too powerful. <laughs> All right, so that brings us up to this week and that rounds up the whole year. I did not tally what I made. There was more complicated stuff this year than even last year. And I feel like I tackled some big stuff last year, like the t-shirt quilt was last year, but I printed my own fabric. I made a bunch of different shorts, figured out those other patterns and also like did a lot of pattern adjustments. I did not have much confidence in myself to do and they went great because I'm not a complete fucking idiot all the time. I do have to workshop some stuff and my brain doesn't always come to the easiest, most obvious conclusion of things, and I have to find workarounds, overcomplicate it, and stress myself out, but still come back around to the same solution. Eventually, after some headaches, I am more capable than I think I am. This is making me want to tackle all the things that I currently feel nervous about tackling. And that's kind of what the goal setting has been about, just forcing myself to, to do the dang things. Okay, and speaking of goals, I have my list that I put up on my corkboard at the beginning of last year, and we are gonna look through it and see what I actually got done. So, invisible zipper, did it. Zipper tab, did it. Fabric printing, did it. Pleats, yes. Dice tray, yes. Black and purple, oh, the dress I made last week, perfecting that pattern, which I did, yes. I just have a note that says dresses, and I don't know what that's in reference to, so. I did make a couple of dresses this year, does that count? And then D&D &D stuff. I think that's in reference to making the garments for my character, which I did not accomplish. And there's one other dress pattern that I've made before, then made again and like didn't quite do enough tweaks to make me like love it. So I do want to like perfect that one as well. So we're gonna add that to this list. We're gonna add D&D &D stuff to this list. I also have my Rohan Kashibe cosplay that I still have not made. Oh yeah, here's the Rohan one. I I don't love that design. I may, I may redesign it. I have the fabric and like the color scheme ready, but my Steed Bonnet one, I have so much set aside. I have a whole bag just of fixins for that costume and I still haven't made it because I know it's going to be involved, but that's okay. I think that'll be a fun process to watch. It doesn't have to be all in one go. What I should do is set the goal by my birthday. That project is done. To be honest, like at least if it's started, that'll be great. But my birthday is like middle end of March. So that seems like a reasonable, tangible goal, especially if I'm doing the thing where I'm taking one week off a month. I'm gonna continue that into 2023. Very, very helpful. I may try to like live stream on those days cause I am often around. I'm just working in my sewing room and I miss doing them. And it, it's just, it's the scheduling that I have a really hard time with cause I don't know talking now if next Friday I'm gonna be around. There's a lot of factors that I don't have control over in my like week to week life. So scheduling stuff like that in advance, especially when I don't have my own off-premise studio space where I can guarantee it'll be a good time to live stream. That's where the main trouble comes in, where I have been feeling more up for it. Figuring out how to tackle live stuff 
please, 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 if you have suggestions, let me know. They would be much appreciated. Anyway, I went all over the place. Rohan in Steed Cosplays. Mara, uh, that's my D&D &D character. There's that petite stitchery Nia wrap dress that I want to make another version of, do the tweaks that I want to do. Make the perfect pair of shorts. I know I have it in me. I've done enough of the practicing. I still have all of the ones that I've made. They've just been like in a pile because I know I want to look back. What did I like from this one that I want to transfer to this? That kind of thing. And then yeah, making more quilted stuff, like small piecing type things. I think that'll be a really fun goal to have for the year. If there's anything big that I've talked about that I'm missing, please remind me because again, out of sight, out of mind, I can only retain so much. I hate that my brain is like a sieve, but I can only work with what I have. <laughs> I hope this was interesting to go through. I know a lot of y'all have watched most of these videos. If you also forgot about stuff, it's nice to have a reminder. Oh, wait, wait. The one thing I'm completely ignoring off of my list from last year is it says crochet literally one thing. I didn't do that. It is not January 31st yet. Also, that's not when the year ends. It ends on December 31st. I'm gonna take my crochet hooks out right goddamn now. Look at this set and like, look at the handle that came with it. Why have, it's so nice to hold. Why have I not been using this? I'm keeping this out. And if that feels too posh for me, I also have this little roll up I made last year, year before. This really awesome, very big selection of wooden ones that are also very nice. Why have I not used these? So it's gonna happen. I'm gonna leave both of these out so they're in my face and I can't ignore them. I'm not allowed to put them away until I have done something with them. That's the rule. That's what's happening. I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> that got weirdly aggressive at the end, but you know, sometimes you gotta be hard with yourself. Face the cold hard truth, you know? Anyway. <laughs> As I said, I so appreciate everyone that spends any time in this little internet neighborhood. And of course, would not be able to keep doing this if it weren't for everybody over on Patreon. Y'all keep the ship afloat. I, I don't know how else to tell you that. Like I was able to get new supplies like my backdrop and buy the couple things of fabric and buy the patterns that I used. Take the time to be in here where I, I do. I get to dedicate a good portion of my week to creating things in here and what an absolute privilege and a gift. So thank you all for giving that to me. I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Ooh, we went real high pitched on that one. I wanna say trapper keeper, but I know that's not the word for this.